This video was originally one of a five part free course centered around habits you can develop to make you a better photographer no matter what level you're working at. All these habits are non-technical in nature. You don't need any expensive equipment, nor do you need to be a technical genius. In fact, they're just as valuable for somebody who's been shooting photographs for a long time as they are to someone just starting out. Now this video should give you pretty much all you need, but if you want more depth, there's a dedicated post over my blog, photosmudger.com, which will have a transcript along with any graphics or imagery that might accompany the video. This video is all about where you get your inspiration from and managing those influences. I'd like to talk to you about your influences. Now there's an old saying that you are what you eat. And I think the same is true in photography, except in photography, it is you shoot what you see. We don't exist in a vacuum, okay? There's this very romantic idea that we can all be very creative and artistic and just come up with ideas out of thin air. I think we create things based on the fertile soil of what we see around us all the time. Therefore, the better the work you look at, the better the work you'll create, and the wider the pool of work you're inspired by, the more original, more interesting your work will be. Just looking at one genre of work or one photographer will usually mean your work ends up becoming very bland and very derivative. Now, if you're just starting out, of course, you're gonna be comparing yourself to people around you who are just starting out, that's absolutely fine. But if you wanna move your work on in leaps and bounds, start looking further afield and as wide as you can at really, really inspiring image creators out there. So where should you be looking for this inspiration? Well, everywhere. Websites, social media, magazines, books, galleries, films, TV programs, anything and everything that inspires you. When you find stuff that inspires you and that you like, follow the lead, track things back. Don't just look at one thing that that person's produced and go, whoop, okay, that's very nice. That person could lead to other people, could lead to other creators, and so on, and so on, and so on. The web, of course, is fantastic for that sort of thing. Yeah, if you put somebody's name into Google, you're probably liable to find other things related to them, and from them, other photographers whose work they were inspired by, and so on, and so on, and so on. Fantastic. That's ideal. Also, don't just look at contemporary stuff. Um, if you've studied at all the history of photography, the history of art in any way, you'll realise that there's actually very, very little out there that's genuinely new. And what may seem new to you was in fact a movement that started 70, 80, 150 years ago. Okay? And you may well benefit from going right back to the source and looking at those original ideas that inspired the artist who first came up with a certain movement or a certain way of looking at the world. A really important principle though with influences is allow yourself to be challenged. If you don't look at work that's outside of your usual sort of comfort zone, you're not really going to discover anything that's new to you. Yeah, it's very tempting to just play it safe and go, I like this, I like that. No, that's what I've seen before, that's what I've seen before. But that won't lead to new ideas, okay? It's almost worth deliberately going out there and looking at stuff that initially makes you go, ooh, ooh, no, I don't like that. Or, oh, I, I wouldn't have any interest in that, I don't shoot that sort of thing at all. It's often in those areas that little gems of inspiration lie. For example, you might be devoted to portrait photography. You may have no interest in, say, still life. But in examining somebody's still life work, you may look at the way they liked things, the way they structure a shot and think, I can take that and I can apply that to my photography work. Oh, wonderful. Or you might be devoted to landscape photography and be used to a very structured, very stable, very slow moving way of working. Then you might see somebody's reportage work and think, I could apply that similar fast moving aesthetic to my landscape work. Okay, and suddenly a whole new world opens up in front of you. That won't happen if you don't challenge yourself. The overriding principle with all inspiration though, is it has to be based on your gut instinct. By all means, listen to the advice of friends, listen to the advice of critics, read reviews of things, but the final arbiter of whether you love something or not is whether you love it or not. It's your gut instinct and you'll have to learn to trust that. Even if everybody else says, oh, that's, that's cheap rubbish, or oh no, that's, that's high art, that's far too fancy, doesn't matter. If you get a gut reaction from looking at it and it inspires you, that's the only rule there is, okay? That's the only one to stick to. One of the things to look out for, one of the guides to this, is if you look at a piece of work, whether it's a photograph, a painting, wherever it might be, you look at it and you find yourself thinking, I wish I'd made that. If you find yourself thinking that, that's a very, very good sign that you want to be learning more about how that person created that work, okay? That's a really, really good indication that you're along the right lines. That should be your guiding principle of looking at things and feeling that little pang of desire and a little twinge of jealousy when you think, ooh, 
oh, I wish I'd come up with that. I wish I'd shot that as well as that. That's, that's fantastic, okay? That's your clue that you're on the right lines. So here's your action step. Here's what you need to do. Basically, look everywhere. Keep looking everywhere. Gather imagery from every source you can, from websites, from films, from television, from magazines, from books, from exhibitions, galleries, whatever it might be, from stuff you snap on your own camera phone, okay? Collect it in the most convenient way to you going. I still have a, an actual physical bank of images that I cut out from magazines and things, and I have loads of books on my shelves, but I also have a huge folder on the computer of imagery that I've gathered from all sorts of digital sources, okay? If you can make the effort, it's worth organising this in some way just to help yourself further down the line when you come to try and find things, but don't get too fussed about that. Certainly don't let it stop you from gathering as much imagery as you like. One important thing though, it's very worth taking the time to credit who created the work. Uh, not just out of professional courtesy, I mean it's quite rude just going, oh I love this but I've no idea who made it. But if you think about it, if you fall deeply in love with some imagery of whatever sort it may be, Knowing who made it is really, really useful because from that you can go and look them up, see what else they've made, see who else might have had a similar approach to work, and then expand your insights even further and further and further. Above all though, remember, be guided by your gut instinct. Doesn't matter what it is, if you love it, and if you get that visceral feeling in your gut, and that little spark in your mind that says, oh, I wish I'd made that, it goes in. That doesn't matter if it's a picture from your camera phone, something torn out of a magazine, a still from a DVD, doesn't matter, stick it in there. As long as you get that reaction, that actual punch of, ooh, that's fantastic, stick it in, that's all that counts.